Welcome to Palazzo Altamps. This is an incredible museum that's part of Museo Nazionale Romano. And it houses an incredible collection of artwork, and in particular, the Ludovisi collection. Let's go take a look. The Boncampagni Ludovisi collection begins in the 17th century, and a lot of works of art were acquired by the family. A lot of works of art were unearthed on their property on the Quirinal Hill. As the story is told, Electra is avenging the death of her assassinated father, Agamemnon. So she's in mourning, and she has cut her hair short. That's how Winkelmann is explaining why this woman has her hair cut short, not very usual in ancient times. And it's signed right here in Greek. It says that Menelaus, pupil of Stephanos, made this. What we have here is a Mars figure, variously dated, but usually around the second century BC. And we have a fabulous, fabulous restoration done in 1622 by Bernini himself. The hilt of the sword, and the head of the little Cupid figure. It's an incredible piece to examine in the round. This is the famous Ludovisi throne. And it's interpreted as belonging to a sanctuary of Aphrodite in Locri in Magna Grecia, or Southern Italy. It would have been brought up to Rome as a spoil of war and dedicated in that sanctuary of Venus, eventually becoming imperial property. This colossal statue, the Juno Ludovisi, was profoundly important to art historians, starting with Winkelmann, to many of the German authors that came here in the 18th century, such as Goethe, who literally fell in love with the statue. It's three times life-size, and today we identify it probably as being a portrait of Antonio the Younger, that is, the mother of the Emperor Claudius. Other people interpret this as being Olivia, but one thing's for sure, it represents some of the best work coming out of Imperial Rome. This is the great Ludovisi sarcophagus, carved from a single block of Proconesian marble. It was found in 1621 near Porta Tiburtina, and became then property of the Ludovisi family. And it's extraordinary for its detail, the drill work, the depth of the relief. And you see a central protagonist at the top, some general. Now this dates to about the middle of the third century AD. And the interpretation is he's one of the sons of the emperor Dacius fighting against the Goths. And you see the violence, the drama of war, and you see on the top register, really, the successful Roman soldiers. And as you make your way down, you see at the bottom, crushed in defeat, the barbarians. The Ludovisi Gaul is stunning. This piece dominates this space here. What it is, is a Gallic chieftain committing suicide, holding in one arm his dead wife that he's already killed. This is the epitome of the noble savage. We can go back to Pergamene art. The kingdom of Pergamon defeats the Celts or Galatians that then Julius Caesar will associate with the Gauls. So this is found on the property, the Celestian Gardens, eventually becoming imperial property, even the property of Julius Caesar himself. But it's got so much drama. There's so much theatricality. It's pulling out from us so much emotional response, and it demands that we walk around to see that horrific scene of suicide and death. Mm -hmm. 